Good morning, folks. What an exciting, exciting series of lessons we are studying. The I Am series that's, that's really only put together in the book, The Gospel of John. We are in the fifth of the seven I Ams that God, through John, his, his apostle, he says, put these seven I am's down in writing. We're in the fifth one. You'll be in chapter 11 of the book of John. Join us, please. He who has an ear, let him listen. It is, it is, uh, give, give ear is what God usually says. Give ear to this because this is very, very important. This is a this is a key one of the I am. They're all key I am's. In chapter 11, we'll be studying the I am the resurrection and the life, L-I-F-E. Chapter 11, verses 1 through 55 is chapter 11. I will try to put together all of the first 44 verses. Some will be paraphrased, some will be summarized because we just don't have enough time, but if I had the time, I would ask you, turn your, your hearing aids up as I just did before I started this lesson and listen to what God has to say. Very important things that he's saying. Particularly, you will get to the, I am the resurrection and the life, L-I-F-E. Do you realize that in seven of the, in the seven I am's, Jesus identifies himself as not only the bread of life, not only the light of life, the door of life, uh, the, the shepherd, uh, the I am the resurrection, uh, and the life, I am the way and the truth, uh, I am the true vine. Not only that, but he is saying in, in three of these, I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This life is very important. You know what it is? It's eternal life that we're going to be studying today. We've used the word life as a Zoe life is the Greek word, but we'll, we'll get into that as the lesson develops. So let's set the scene. We're in, we're in chapter 11 of the book of John, and we are... You, I hope you realize that John wrote this in his old age. He's probably written, writing, writing it around 85 AD, maybe as, maybe as late as 90 AD. But he is trying to straight, set the record straight of, I am a witness to the things that Jesus did. And here is, you know, a lot of things are going around about Jesus and who he was and what he's doing. But I'm going to tell you the real facts. And that's why the Gospel of John is in, is, is in your Bible today. So John records the I Am's. He is the only one in today's lesson, the only one in none of the other Gospels, the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, the synoptics as they're called, the three synoptics. John's a little bit different, but it is one of the, of the four Gospels. This is the only place in the Bible, you will find the story of Lazarus and the I am uh, definition or the, the, the revealing that Jesus wants to say I, who I am. And he sets it all up. You've noticed in our study so far that he's, he, he sets certain things up. The, the bread, he set it up that way. The door, uh, the, the shepherd, he uses those examples as uh, ways to set up what he wants to reveal himself, all coming, all coming from the original in Exodus, uh, in Exodus chapter, I think it's chapter twelve, verse fourteen, when when uh, Moses is in the burning bush and he he reveals himself as the I Am. You are now fifteen hundred plus years later. You're now seeing Jesus is saying, I am the I am. And here's how I am the I am. So today we're going to study a great lesson on Jesus revealing that there's a, there's a different kind of, 
of, of resurrection going to happen to you and I and to Jesus than happened to Lazarus. Lazarus yes, Lazarus was, was risen up. He had been asleep. He had been dead, physically dead, not just sleeping, not snoring. He was dead and he was raised back, but he will die again. The one death that he has to die, that we all have to die. But in that instant, we are going to be in the presence of Jesus and God, and it is glorious. And he's talking about that type of resurrection and that type of life. The life is eternal life, not, not just a life of uh, bios life, as, as, the, as the Greeks called it, which we get biology from is how we get it. It's the physical body. Uh, uh, the bios life is just, I say, walking down the road, kicking rocks, not knowing what life is all about. Life is, life is in Jesus. Life is in God's way. That's where, that's where we find the real life. That's a Zoe life. So with that said, let's start reading God's word. I'm reading from the New, New American Standard Bible, and we will be in chapter 11. I'll be in verses 1 through 3, but I want to stop in each one and talk just a little bit about it. Now, Jesus is on, it's, we're, we're within about 8 or 10 days, maybe, maybe 11 days, of Jesus and the crucifixion. But we are, we are, he is over on the eastern side of the Jordan River. He is in a, a, a province known as Perea. And Perea is, is right across from the, uh, from, from the Jordan River. It's, today it's Jordan. You would find it as Jordan today. But also, I think that this is the area of the wilderness where Jesus when he had been uh, when when he had been baptized by John the Baptist in the in the in the Jordan River, Jesus went into the wilderness for forty days and was was tempted by the devil. This is that same area where Jesus is now waiting until the time is right. He's got one more one more I am uh, in in with a sign one, I, I, not the last this is not the last i am there are two more i ams after today but this is the last one with a miracle coming with it or as jesus calls it i'm giving you a sign i, I this is a sign and uh, of of i am who i say i am and so he's over on the eastern side of the jordan river John the Baptist had baptized Jesus in the Jordan River, probably pretty close to where Jesus is right now. When all this thing, this story comes together from chapter 11, only in chapter 11 is the place you'll find this, this story. He, he is in Perea, and it's the same area where John the Baptist preached, make way for the Messiah. He is coming. The Messiah is coming. John the Baptist did. So there are a lot of Jews around that area, even though it's over on the eastern side of the Jordan River. And Jesus is over there. And Mary and Martha, who are main characters of this lesson today, uh, Jesus is the main character, but uh, they, are, they are auxiliaries to, uh, ancillaries to, uh, to, to Jesus's story with Lazarus. So, with that said, you know where he is. He's there. And here comes the story. Chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany. Bethany is a little town. It means the house of unripe dates or figs is what Bethany means. It's only about two miles from Jerusalem. Now he, the, Bethany is on the western side of the Jordan River, very close to Jerusalem. Jesus is over on the eastern side. Remember that as we set the scene here. A certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany. Lazarus is, is, the, is the, uh, the brother of two sisters, and they are friends of Jesus, more than friends, more, more, they're buddies. They are, they are real, they are, they are real, uh, panos, as, as we say in, in, in Spanish. So, uh, I, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus. Lazarus mean, I, I looked up, what does, what, what does the word Lazarus mean? A very common word to the Hebrews, to the Jews, but it meant God has helped. 
God has helped. Now, whether whether Lazarus, whether the parents of Lazarus knew that or not, God is going to help. Jesus is God. God, Jesus is going to help Lazarus. He's going to be raised raised from the dead uh, to life, but he's also going to have to die later on. So don't 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 get that confused with the resurrection that Jesus is going to be talking about. And they're in, they live in Bethany. Lazarus is in Bethany. The village of Mary and her sister Martha. That's verse 1. Martha and Mary have different personalities. You need to understand that as, as the story develops because you're going to see different ways of approaching Jesus and different comments that they make and things like that. However, I do see a little bit of familiarity between the two with Mary and Martha in one particular statement that they make. So, well... Martha is the worrier. Martha, Martha wants to, uh, she's, she's got a lot of traits. Uh, and she go in, in the book of Luke. Now, remember the story of Lazarus and the, and the raising of Lazarus by Jesus is not in the book of Luke. But it, there is a story of, of Mary and Martha having a dinner for Jesus. And, and uh, Mary's in there with Jesus enjoying Jesus, listening to him, understanding a little bit about him. And Martha comes in and is quite upset. She, she comes in to Jesus, and these are my words, but doesn't it bother you, Jesus, that, that Mary's sitting here and I'm in there working just like I am? And, and, and Jesus, the, these are famous words, Martha, Martha. <laughs> He's saying, Martha, Martha, Mary has chosen what's best. Mary has chosen what's best to do. She's sitting down at the feet of Jesus. And so two sisters, entirely different personalities. Verse two, it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Well, when did this happen? We'll go over to chapter 12, just one, one chapter over. A couple of days later, after this adventure that we're, the, the I am adventure that we're on today, Jesus is back in the house of, of, uh, of Martha and Mary with Lazarus alive. Lazarus is alive. He's there at the dinner. And what does Mary do? She sits down at the feet of Jesus, pours, uh, pours a very, very expensive ointment on the feet of Jesus. This is so expensive. I said, well, what makes this nard, N-A-R-D, which is a perfume, a great fragrance, but it's more than that, friends. It is, it is what's used in the burial of a person. Mary knows, and this is, this is me speaking, but it almost says it in chapter 12. Mary knows that Jesus is going to die, and, and she is, is pouring this very expensive 300 denarii is what it, what it costs. And old Judas Iscariot speaks up, speaks up and says, you know, Boy, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be wasting that 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 kind of that kind of money. We should be putting that money in our treasury for us to use. Well, there's all sorts of uh, reasons for that, but the point is that Mary uses this nard, and nard comes from the only place that nard is available. It's a plant, and it's in the high Himalayas over in Nepal, and uh, it is. That's where they had to get it, and it's 300 denarii. One denarii is a day's wage for a, uh, uh, just a, a worker. Just, just a worker in a plant today, it would be equivalent to that. It, it was one day's wage. So that's 300 days worth of work wages for a year of work if they didn't work on the, on the Sabbath day. Uh, it, would be, it would be that they would... They would uh, a whole year's worth of words. That's how much she loved the Lord. So this verse two, it was Mary who, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Verse three. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Very important words here. The sisters send a word, send a messenger over on the eastern side into Perea, which is now today present-day country of Jordan. But it was a uh, it was a province that had been given by the Romans to Herod, uh, as because the Herod family had had really controlled uh, uh, 
Palestine or Israel at that time for the Romans. So, uh, so Jesus is over there. They sent word to him and said, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. This love, L-O-V-E, if we were reading in the, in the, in the Hebrew or the Greek, really, uh, we would have a word that says this is philo, P-A, philio, philio, philo. And it is kindness, it is delight, it is a brotherly love. You get it, Philadelphia, the brotherly love. So they're saying uh, you love, that, that you love him that way. That's not right. That's not right. They're, the girls don't have the wording quite right. They'll get it right before it's over with. And this word for sick is a Greek word meaning deficient. You are, it, our brother is deficient. They think he's sick. And they don't say, Jesus, heal him. Jesus, do this, do that. What they, what they say at this point, what they say at this point, your friend, your friend who is your, your, your uh, you, you love him with brotherly love is sick. Well, uh, they're saying to themselves, they have no doubt who will come. They, they have no doubt that Jesus will come. They, they, surely Jesus would hurry quickly to come and heal Lazarus. They expected Jesus to be on the same page that they're on. They expected him to, to be on their page. They're anxious. I can't blame them for being anxious. You couldn't either. You couldn't either. If the Messiah is there and they know he's the Messiah, they, they know he's a miracle worker. He's more than a miracle worker, my friends. And he, he, is, he is the Messiah. There's no question about that. But they are, they are saying, I know you'll hurry. We know you'll hurry. Uh, friends, we want Jesus on our timetable. When we're in trouble, we want, it, we want his help now. We don't say, Jesus, three weeks from now, four days from now, Jesus, would you do this for me? We say, Lord, please help me right now. I need your help right now. Jesus has other, other plans. Even, even today, in today's world, Jesus sees what's going on with us. He knows it. He cries when we're crying. He, he hurts when we hurt. He knows what's going on. He does know what's going on. The sisters knew Jesus' power. They knew his authority. They knew his reputation of healing, and they, they expect something to happen very, very quickly. Verse 4, but when Jesus heard this, he said, now who is he talking to? Jesus said, he's, that's not Mary and Martha. They're over in Bethany on the western side of the bank. He's, Jesus is on the eastern side. of the bank. He's got part of his apostles. Not all of them are with him right now. I found a place where Peter was probably not there at that time. He was somewhere else and doing, doing, his, doing some work. Uh, but I know that the, the, some of the apostles were there, followers of his, true followers were his, and some were just along for the excitement of what's Jesus going to do next? Who is this guy, Jesus? Uh, so when Jesus heard this, he said, now he's going to say, this sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, it's gonna it's gonna make God more glorious as a result of what's going on. He says it out loud. The people hear this. He has said it. Remember that because because now he's going. The, the messenger is going to be going back to to Mary and Martha and say exactly what Jesus said. So, but for the glory of God, verse verse. Uh, uh, Continuing on with verse 4. So that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Jesus will be glorified. He'll, be, he'll stand out. He will, he, people will recognize him. What he's fixing to do. He's got it all set up just like he had some of the other the I am's. He sets it up very well. Gathers an audience around so they can see and they can believe that they will believe through faith in him. So uh, Jesus knew something that Mary and Martha didn't know. There was a greater purpose for this situation. There is a greater purpose 
for the situations that you and I find ourselves in is how we should relate to that today. It was for the glory of the Lord. It was so the Son of God could be glorified and it would introduce, it would introduce the resurrection as eternal life for believers in Jesus. It, those are the three things that I think came out of what this whole story is about. And it is the Jews, the Sadducee sect of the, of the Jews did not believe in a resurrection at the end. But most Jews did believe in a resurrection. They didn't know, they didn't know what they were being resurrected to. They thought, a lot of them thought they were being resurrected because the, the Messiah would come then and, and take care of them. So that's what they thought after death. But they had no idea about what Jesus is talking about. So uh, at this time, I can't blame the girls for what they're going through right now. I'm going to make a statement here. And, I, and we could debate it. If you want to catch me in the hall or you want to, you want to know, uh, sit down with me and have a cup of coffee, we'll do it. Uh, our greatest gift is the eternal life that we receive in Jesus. Our greatest gift is that. Jesus is our greatest gift. Now, I'm not going to debate those kind of things, the wording that I've used here. In fact, I scratched out. I said at first, our greatest gift might be and then, and then the Lord kept talking to me for the last week, and I, I finally, a couple of days ago, scratched out might and said, is, our greatest gift is the eternal life we receive in Jesus. So, well, with that said, Jesus has, has said, he's not going to, he's, Jesus said, this sickness is not to end in death. This particular sickness, this sickness that, that Lazarus is going through right now is not going to end in, in death death eternal death it is it is he's going to be raised again is what it is what it says so all right verse five now jesus loved martha and mary and lazarus jesus loved l-o-v-e-d this love the bible gets it right the the lord is trying to tell you that he loves him with the highest form of love as he loves you and I, it's not, it's not phileo. It is not Philadelphia love. It is not brotherly love. It, he, he loves us and he loved Lazarus. He loved Martha and Mary with a agape love. The, it's a Greek word and it means the highest form of love, the love God has for us. It is sacrificial love. It is divine love. It's used in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That love is where I nail down the fact that He loves me and loves you with agape love also. Well, uh, moving on. Uh, Jesus' love is limitless. It is agape love, and Jesus stays two more days in Perea, over on the eastern side. He stays intentionally two days. He's confident. Uh, he shows confidence. Mary and Martha are very concerned. They're anxious. They, as, as I would be too, Jesus delays, not callously. No, he's not callous about this, friends, or with lack of compassion. Look back at verse 4. He's already told the people that are around him over in Perea, this sickness, he's going he's gonna to raise, he's going to come back from this sickness. Jesus says that. He did not promise that Lazarus would not die, permanently die, forever. Uh, but the point is, he's going to make a point. Lazarus isn't going to die forever. Lazarus, the instant he he leaves this. He he leaves this body. His soul goes to be in the presence of Jesus after Jesus is resurrected and is in is in heaven. Uh, he will be with God, and he will be alive again through his soul, and his body will come back to match that soul. That very important word, soul. I've learned a lot about it in this study, and I've studied deeply about it. This, uh, the spirit, I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit, but the spirit that's in us, 
fills up and feeds us. It gives us confidences of who Jesus is into our soul. And therefore, when we leave the world, leave this world uh, with our resurrection of our, of our soul and our body will be resurrected later, uh, we are in the presence of Jesus and we have this assurance the the soul is with us until we match it back up with the with a new body that we will have so uh, let's keep moving on in verses 6 through 16 uh, his, his I'm not going to read those 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 parts of the lesson there's a warning from his from his uh, apostles that are with him and his his followers that said Jesus don't don't even think about going over over into Judea because They've got a hit list out on you, and uh, and they're gonna they're gonna want to arrest you and kill you is what they're really gonna want to do. So that's what's going on in six to sixteen. But Jesus says, "I'm," and this is me paraphrasing. I must finish the work God has given me. Uh, I must go to a friend who needs me. He sleeps, s l e e p s, and the the apostles and his followers think. Well, you mean he's sleeping? Well, that's good that he's sleeping, Jesus. Let him keep sleeping because sleeping heals people. And Jesus has a reason for using the word sleep, but he's more than asleep. He is dead. And uh, my death is asleep. When I'm going to die, my death is asleep, but I will awake immediately and be in the presence of, of God. The example is appropriate because Lazarus will awaken from a sleep. Yes, he will awaken to live again. Jesus will be with him when Mary pours the ointment on on uh, on Jesus about two days later over in Bethany where they're having a meal. And uh, Lazarus is present. He's awake. He's he's up moving around. In fact, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees of Sanhedrin puts out a list also, well, let's get Jesus, but also let's get Lazarus while we're at it because this this just can't be. This, this is not good in their estimation. So now let's pick up the lesson again in 17 through 19. So when Jesus came, where did he come to? He came to Bethany. He's, he's outside of Bethany right now. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Verse 18, now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. Bethany is just two miles from Jerusalem. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. But notice Jesus, who, who is their supposed friend, who Agape loves them, their teacher, the miracle worker, has not come until four days later. Friends drop everything when, when I hear of a friend being in a hospital, I drop everything and begin to move toward that hospital that my friend's in trouble. Let's see what God has for us to say in verses 20 and 21 now. We're still in chapter 11. Remember, he's over close to Bethany. He's right right there. And here comes Martha. Now let's let's read what's going on there in verse 20. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming... He's coming down the road. She went to meet him. She, she comes out and meets him. But Mary stayed at the house. Mary is very distraught, wants to be alone. She, she, but Martha jumps out. She's coming. Verse 21, Martha then said to Jesus, she sees him. She talks to him. And here's where it gets a little sticky. It gets just a little bit sticky. I I hope I wouldn't do that. I hope I wouldn't do what Martha did, but I, but she's distraught. Her brother is, is, is dead. He's been in a tomb now for four days. And uh, Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, this is verse 21. If you had been here, my brother would, would not have died. She said, what's going on, Jesus? What are you doing? Martha is a task-oriented, very aggressive personality. She's orderly. Uh, Mary's more laid back, but Mary's going to say, say the same words that, she, that, that, uh, that Martha does also. I had a good friend, she's passed on now, in Midland. Her husband was one of my dearest friends, a Texas Aggie. And uh, uh, 
they they may see this this less um, he may see it he's he's a widower now but uh but Martha was a great great gal and I always talked about her as is the Martha she she had great dinners and things like that Martha is a taskmaster a, a very aggressive she comes and confronts Jesus I imagine her challenge her her they she was challenging their friendship I think I, I don't know I, I think that things went on and and she she understood what went on with Jesus ultimately. Mary understands it better, I think. Is she casting blame on Jesus? I'm going to ask you, do we cast blame on Jesus when our, our, our child dies, when our mate is gone, when we're left alone, destitute? Do we blame Jesus? Do we? How things would have and could have been is the question. If only you had come sooner, Jesus. If only you had come sooner. Do we cast blame on Jesus? I prayed to you, Jesus. Why didn't you answer quickly? That's what, that's what we have a tendency to say. Jesus is a true friend. He's the best friend you'll ever have. He's a friend that won't let you down. Friends will even let you down sometimes. Hope not, but friends will let you down. Jesus is a true friend and He can handle our hurt he can handle what we're upset about he can handle it verse 22 even now i know that whatever you ask of god god will give you this is martha speaking even now i know that whatever you ask of god god will give you she hasn't said jesus raise him from the dead she has said whatever i know i know that you can get anything done jesus she doesn't have a lack of faith. She's got, she's got the faith. Her faith is strong, it seems to me like, with this statement. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. I don't think she understands who Jesus really is but, and, and the power that he has. She's fixing to figure it out. She's seen his miracles. Yes, she's heard of his miracles. Jesus is listening. He's letting her getting her feet, get her feelings out. He lets you and lets me get our feelings out. That's why you can't hide anything from him. Speak to him about it, just like I'm speaking to you. Jesus, I need your help. I need your help for my friend. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Your brother will rise again. What he's saying is your brother will rise again. To die again is, is the second part of that, but he doesn't say that. But uh, This is not the resurrection. He will rise again. The gospel is good news, my friends. It is, it is good tidings. It is, it is, uh, we must proclaim the good news of the gospel. The message of the gift of salvation through the person and work of Jesus. He is saying he will rise again. A restoration will occur from this death, from the death he's in right now, but not resurrected, and he will face again death, but then be resurrected. Is what This is between the lines, what you and I have the access to knowing now that, that Martha couldn't put together. Martha heard the good news, but Jesus was using using this to give more good news. Here comes more good news. More gospel is coming, friends. More gospel is coming. The physical body is, is resuscitation, but the spiritual body is immortal. It is the spiritual body with, where our soul is and the spirit is is immortal it is it is a body transformed by the power of god martha had probably heard that jesus had spoken of the resurrection on the last day uh, she she has heard this and she's thinking about the resurrection on the on the last day and she says says something about it but she doesn't understand because the jews have been taught forever that there will be a resurrection at the end times. Jesus said to him, Martha, excuse me, G Martha said to him, to Jesus, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. She's using that word resurrection. 
on the last day, but thinks it's just to rise again in a different way. Nothing about the world. The last day, this last day is the last day of the world. It is, it is when Jesus comes back. The last day is the end of the physical time of the world, and it is the end of the age, but utopia will come for those who believe, is what my words are. Uh, but not the way Jesus will now explain it. From the Old Testament, Jews knew the re resurrection. Jesus knows many are listening. He, he knows that there are a lot of people listening. There, there, these mourners are around. There are, there are good folks around and there are bad folks around, my friends. Always going to be that way. But in verses 25 and 26, Jesus said, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The very key to this lesson, my friends, is verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. This life is eternal life that he's talking about now. Now he's going Zoe plus. It is Zoe, which is the, uh, Zoe is life uh, in the spiritual soul. It is life given by God. It is a life devoted to to God. It is fullness of life. And it is as versus the bios life, the biology life that I said, physical life, the, 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 the carnal, the physical pleasures, riches, anxieties of life, that sort of thing. Uh, but this is the Zoe with eternal life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. He will live eternally. This life is now eternal life that Jesus is talking about. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Even though we, we, are, are, we are absent from the body, we are present with, with Jesus after we die. And we are, we are an individual. We, know, we are known by name. Our soul is there. It's been filled up. It is the confidences we have in Jesus. And the Spirit is the one that's filled that up. You're hearing the word. You hear rehearing the word. Here at the tenth time. Here at the twentieth time. That's what fills you up with this this soul filling experience of, of of life, the Zoe life. May be the most important question we can ask a friend. Friends, do you believe this? Do you really believe this? I do. And I hope you do and pray that you do. Keep working on it, friends. Jesus doesn't, he's not missing a beat. He says, Jesus is now saying to them, the last words in verse 26, is, just as Jesus' word, red letter. Do you believe this? I'm asking the same thing to us. He is the essential element of the resurrection. Without him, there is no resurrection. There is no resurrection. Without him, there is none. It's exclusively in Jesus. It's, it's on Jesus and it's in Jesus. No room for speculation here, friends. It's not He has resurrection and life. It is, I am the resurrection and life. A great big difference. There is a great sting to sin and death. But the sting is taken out. Yes, we grieve as Mary and Martha are grieving over their brother. But it's com he's coming back and they will rejoice. And that's what you should say. Rejoice that your friend, your loved one, your mate, your, your son, your daughter, your granddaughter, whatever, whoever it is, they are in a better thing and better situation, not thing, better place than we, than we are. And they have joy untold. Death for a follower of Jesus is a sleep which awakens to eternal life. Verse 27, And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. As I said, her faith is pretty good. Her faith is very good. And uh, it, there, there's, there's nothing wrong with her faith. It's just she 
doesn't understand that Jesus uses this as a way to reveal what he wants to reveal in the I am. She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the, the Christ. You are the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of God, even he who comes into the world. You, you've come into the world. It's a great truth. Her brother is still dead. He, he's, not, he's not awake. He's not, he's not alive. He's, he's dead. Circumstances haven't changed. There's unfinished business here. In verses 28 through 33, Martha goes back into the house. She goes into her house and tells Mary everything that's gone on. Jesus then wants to see Mary. Mary sees Jesus and falls at his feet. She's, he's outside. He's not in the house. And she also says to Jesus in this verses 28 through 33, if you had just been here, Jesus, you'd have done something. Now, now when Jesus therefore saw, this is verse 33, verse 33 through 35, when Jesus therefore saw Mary weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit. Now, we can't, we can't get a, a good enough English word to get that deeply moved. I mean, he was really, really moved. Do you realize that he's moved? He is deeply, deeply, deeply moved when you're in trouble, when you have problems. If you're a follower of his, he is. And he wants everybody. He wants the worst person in the world to be his follower. And he, 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 he is trying his best to show who he is right now as a man. He will come back this next time and it'll be too late, my friend. Was deeply moved. He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. This troubled is a Greek word that means shaked with, uh, he shook with emotion. He, he is shaking with emotion. Sometimes I will, my emotions get, get a hold of me and sometimes I'll just, I'll just shake a little bit. So I understand that. Verse 34, and said, Jesus is saying, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. We'll take you to where he is. We'll take you over there, Lord. The people say that. And sure enough, they're going to go over there. Don't you think Jesus knew where he was? Don't, don't you really know? But he's using people. He's got, he's got a mission here. He is on a mission. It is very, very important, the mission that he's on. Well, we'll finish up the lesson pretty quickly now. Verse 38. So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Verse 39, Jesus said, remove the stone. Don't you think Jesus could have sent angels and done and removed the stone? But he's a man here on earth. He's going to do it. He wants, he wants to, people to see what's going on. He could have removed the stone before he even got there. But he's showing that Lazarus is dead, and I am the I am. I'm going to raise him. I'm going to raise him up. And you and I will be raised up too. Make sure you understand. Leave this lesson with that. Verse 39, Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, verse 40, Did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you, Martha, that you were going to see what's going on here. You and Mary are now, you're, you're here at the tomb too. So believe and see the glory. Martha's kind of challenging Jesus again. So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, he's praying. Father, I thank you that you've heard me. Verse 42, I knew that you always hear me. He's speaking out loud, friends. He's not, this is not, he's not hiding off in the side. Everybody's listening. The ears are, as I said, if you have ears, listen. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around me, I said it. So that they may believe that you sent me, capital M for me. Jesus is speaking in, verse, in 42, 43. 
When he had said these, these things, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He says it in a loud voice for everyone to hear. Jesus is the one that's bringing him out. Verse 44, the man who had died came out, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his faith was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the final miracle in, in chapter, in, in, in the Gospel of John. This is the final miracle that God picked of the seven miracles that John uses. We've got Many, many, many miracles, but these seven were used. Now, there are seven I am's. Not all of them did he use signs or miracles to do it, but he does reveal himself. So Jesus wants them to believe. Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come forth. Come forth. Come forth is, I would say, get out of there, Lazarus. You're alive. Now, if you went on with in, in 44 to 55, as I'm not going to be able to, many believed, many, many turned to Jesus as the Messiah and as the one promised by God and said, we will follow you, Jesus. Many believed, but some went back to the Pharisees and told them what they had heard, what they had seen, and the chief priests meet and they, they get all upset and they're, they're the Sanhedrin's meeting. Uh, this man is performing signs, and we can't we can't have this. This is not this is not good. Uh, they keep looking for Jesus. They wanted to arrest him. Is how chapter eleven ends. So you now see, and Jesus uses this word, the resurrection. There is resurrection for you and I awaiting us, if if we will believe. Thank you for paying attention to the lesson today. Thank you for understanding the I am's.